Our children are under attack by a satanic assault in the areas of sexual identity and immorality right under our noses. Sneaky politics and brazen perversion in education are aggressively indoctrinating our youth to reject godly principles. There's a lot of people who think they're something because the spirit that entered them as children has been expressing itself through them uninterrupted by anyone with spiritual discernment or knowledge or authority. In this searing prophetic encounter, Bishop McClendon exposes these deceptive tactics. Yet it is up to us to police the atmosphere and use our authority in Christ Jesus to destroy them. It's not about your political affiliation. It's about lifting the darkness off of a generation. For our sons and daughters will prophesy and glorify the living God. The Academy of Healing and Wellness Convention returns with fresh revelation about the grace and power of Jesus Christ, an essential resource for every believer, especially in these challenging times. In these extensive sessions, Bishop McClendon teaches how the Word of God is the new creation's medication, how the power to heal is always present using God's kingdom principles, and how God doesn't punish us with sickness because we did something wrong. The ministry of Jesus is a teaching, preaching, healing ministry. He heals all kinds of disease and he heals everything. Which means no matter what kind they come up with, he heals it. If you desire to walk in divine health, make the Academy of Healing and Wellness your center for disease control and turn on the flow of God's healing power today. Now available 
on the Bishop of Hendon Digital Download Store. The severity of the times has unleashed a plethora of perplexities worldwide, including the hotly debated issue of racial equality. But in order to deconstruct racism, we must first acknowledge that its ideology is based on a historic lie and not biblical truth. Race is not in the mind of God. Race is not distinguished in the Bible. Race is not remotely a Christian concept. So my question is, why does the church continue to engage in the divisive narrative of race? In this unapologetic and confrontational series, Bishop McClendon lays an ax to the root of hatred and bigotry using biblical evidence to prove God divided men first on the basis of their language and ultimately on the basis of their covenant relationship with him and not their skin color. Order this resource today when you visit our website or call 310-323-2600. The severity of the times has unleashed a plethora of perplexities worldwide, including the hotly debated issue of racial equality. But in order to deconstruct racism, we must first acknowledge that its ideology is based on a historic lie and not biblical truth. Race is not in the mind of God. Race is not distinguished in the Bible. Race is not remotely a Christian concept. So my question is, why does the church continue to engage in the divisive narrative of race. In this unapologetic and confrontational series, Bishop McClendon lays an ax to the root of hatred and bigotry, using biblical evidence to prove God divided men first on the basis of their language and ultimately on the basis of their covenant relationship with him and not their skin color. Order this resource today when you visit our website or call 310-323-2600. See, if 1 Peter 24, 1 Peter 2, 24 is true, who himself bore our sins in his own body, that we being dead to sin might now live from his righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. If by his stripes we were healed, then I don't have to do anything to be healed. I were healed. We are in a new covenant with better promises. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross made this a reality for us. However, what you say determines the outcome of your health. And it's because we keep saying the wrong thing that sickness continues to distress us. By whose stripes you were. By whose stripes you were. Here, so let me ask you, what changed the fact that you're healed? Ah, thank you. Nothing changed. Don't tolerate this another day. Take authority over sickness by applying these principles from the Academy of Healing and Wellness. You have a covenant right to good health. All you got to do is say so. So I live by the faith of the Son of God. I am constantly living by the revelation of what I know He did for me. And whatever I know he did for me, whatever the Bible says he did for me, that's what I say is mine. So I say, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. See, my faith is in his finished work, which he accomplished by his faith. Ministering Healing in the New Covenant. Available now in the digital download store. Friends and partners, this is the prophet, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon. As you can see, I am surrounded with food. We're getting ready to sow, to give this food away to over a thousand families as we celebrate and minister into their lives. I want to take this opportunity to thank you because all of this abundant supply that we're able to give is because of people like you who are praying and sowing into this ministry. You know, in Acts 10, 38, not long ago I was reading, 
The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. I've known that scripture for years, and I always thought the healing and the doing good were the same thing. Healing is a good thing, so when the Bible says he went about uh, doing good and healing all, I thought it was the same thing, but I was impressed to research it here recently, and I realized that that word doing good is completely separate from the healing ministry of Jesus. As a matter of fact, that word doing good in the original Greek has to do with philanthropy, which literally meant that not only did Jesus go around healing people, but everywhere he went, he was doing philanthropic work giving. In this hour, with all that's going on in the earth, with the pandemic and the social unrest and the economic things that are happening, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ministry of Jesus, has got to be being philanthropic to people. And so I'm grateful and thankful to you that you have enabled us to be able to sow this into the lives of a thousand families. And we're believing God by His grace and with your help to do much more.
you will end well. You will end good. The situation will be good because our God is good and he is good. He resides in you. His spirit is living within you. So everything that you give forth to must be good. It will be good. It is good. Declare that it is good for he is good and he reigns eternally. and praise. Amen. So come on, let's put our hands together. We know that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, like this. Come on, let's dance before the Lord. Hallelujah. When we think about his goodness and all that he's done for us. Hallelujah. We gonna send Judah first. Come on. Hey. Oh 
Stay right there. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful counselor. My, he wants to hear from you. Hallelujah. 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 How many know that his name is above all of every name that we serve an awesome God? Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, everybody say, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, sing with me, how great is our God. Our God. And all will see, all will see how, great. how great, how great, how great. How 
Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. You've been, you've been so good, so good. You've been, you've been so good, so good. To me, yeah. To me. Say right there, say, Lord, you. So good. 
laying on my sick bed. You been and you raised me up so good. Oh, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you.
brought him out of Egypt in the song was that his love endures forever. But we're going to personalize it. When I was on my sickbed and he healed me, his love endures forever. Yes? You got it? His love endures forever. The great I am who brought me out.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that that's your testimony this morning, that forever all our days, no matter the situation, no matter what we're going through, no matter what it looks like, God is worthy of our praise and that we'll love him because the love that he extends to us is more than enough, is never failing, is unending. Can you clap your hands in the presence of the Lord this morning in the spirit? of worship and as you're here in the tabernacle and those of you watching via live stream prepare your heart today even as we're in worship let God do a miracle 
Let them speak something to you amazing. Let them blow your minds. This is the Christmas season. We celebrate the miracle of the birth of our Lord, Jesus Christ. How many of you know that the coming of Jesus was a miracle? It wasn't planned. It wasn't, uh, no man had any intervention in it, but it was just God and someone's yes that produced a miracle for the whole world. So we just want to love you this morning and, and, uh, and say God bless you and welcome to the place of grace. This is the place where whoever can be healed of whatever sickness or whatever disease, whatever is confronting you, whatever is trying to attack you, the moment you step onto these grounds, the moment you logged on, you logged on and you connected to grace. And that grace is more than enough to bring you everything you need and to take you out of anything you need to get out of and bring you in to whatever place that God has purposed for you to be in. So can we clap our hands and thank God for the place of grace? And again, like the prophet says, it's not a geographic location, it's a spiritual destination, meaning that the person sitting next to you is a man or a woman of grace. And those of you logging on, you're logging on and connecting to grace. So it's the people of God, it's you and I collectively, those of you watching even around the world that make up this global atmosphere of grace. So we want to extend greetings to you on behalf of our prophet, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon, the entire Place of Grace family and community. Welcome to the worship experience this morning from Inglewood, California, here at the Tabernacle. We're excited about what God is doing in our midst this holiday season. It's already, already the, uh, the first week, already past the first week into December, so we're moving on ahead to the deadline of the close of this year, but God is still moving, God is still speaking, God is still delivering, He is still blessing. If you haven't gotten your 2023 breakthrough yet, just keep on holding on, just keep the word in your mouth. Don't stop giving, don't stop sowing, don't stop praising, because breakthrough is still promised you, even though you haven't seen it yet. So we want to just encourage any and everyone as always, to stay connected to this apostolic and this prophetic anointing. And you can do that on all of our social media platforms. We want to encourage and we want to follow the prophet on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. When you get to YouTube, make sure uh, you fill yourself up with word, with revelation, with worship, with praise, with the worship experiences. And after you've got yours on YouTube, after you click off of YouTube and you've left refreshed, make sure you subscribe. We want to get our subscriber numbers just to continue to go up. We want to flood all of these social media platforms with this same fragrance so that people just randomly searching and scrolling can click on it and all of a sudden they've connected to the power and to the presence of God. Can we clap our hands and thank God for the PEC, the prophetic e-community, PEC, that hand clap that's taking place right now in the tabernacle is for you. We want to give a salute to the PEC. God bless the prophetic e-community all year. You have been faithful in your partnership and you're connecting to the prophet of God and it does matter. Your connection does matter because he takes this PEC seriously. I've seen him when we've been in airports and he's there working on faith building letters, working on what he's going to get to the PEC from God's mouth to the prophet's ears. He wants to get it to you. And if you haven't signed up and if you're in the tabernacle, maybe you come live in person and you haven't joined the PEC, sign up and join today. It's free. All we need is your information right there at bishopmcclendon.com. And when you sign up today, you're enrolled into what I, I say. I love saying this, a global database. I just like that. If feels good to be included into a global database that makes me that, that makes me feel good but you know you getting it enrolled into a global database of partners of believers of men and women of God all over the world who have leveled up who have uh, taken their connection to this apostolic and prophetic anointing to the next dimension and when you do that Bishop McClendon will send you faith building letters he takes the time out to write them he takes the time out to say to the PEC what God is saying to him so that this prophetic community cannot just hear the word. How many know the Bible said it's not enough to be a hearer of the word, but it's the doer of the word that's blessed. But you can't do the word that you don't hear. So you've got to hear the word and God wants the PEC to get this word. So, and the prophet wants to get it to him. So when you sign up and join, he sends faith building letters. He wants you to pray the prophetic word, pray the word of God. Don't just hear it. Don't just listen to it. Don't just amen it, but pray it. Because when you pray the word of God, 
when you speak the word of God, when you strike the mantle, when you strike the waters of your situation with that mantle of that apostolic and prophetic anointing, that is when miracles, signs, wonders take place. So don't wait, don't hesitate. If you haven't signed up, join the PEC today. It's going to bless your life and you're going to be seeing blessings, favor, increase, confirmation, revelation, strength, all the way into your 2000. 24 we want to just give you highlights on our holiday schedule as the holidays are among us our christmas eve uh, service we're going to have christmas eve service this year at the place of grace it, yeah, can we clap our hands for that it's these are the holidays the holy days these are holy days here and that's going to be sunday december 24th christmas eve uh our christmas eve service is sunday december 24th but here at the place of grace at clarity mcclinton ministries our christmas day service we always take time the prophet has always done this we always have a christmas day service no matter what day of the week it lands on that's jesus's birthday that's the day that we should show up and give praise to the king of kings for the gift he is the free gift that has been given to all of us but so before you celebrate before you open up presents before you swig on some eggnog come over here to the place of grace christmas morning that's monday december 25th it's going to be from 10 30 to noon worship with us there's nothing like being in the presence of god on that christmas morning there's unique and special uh, and mystical if i can almost say that word presence of god that's in our midst and we want to include everyone who's watching via live stream as well if you can't get anywhere if you want to get to a worship experience we'll be here live on christmas morning live streaming coming to you from the place of grace celebrating the birth of the gift of the king of kings and lord of lords and we're going to wrap up this year sunday december 31st the end of 2023 our new year's eve renaissance watch night service that sunday december 31st uh it's a sunday it's a sunday so here's the announcement here's the sunday it's a sunday i got okay so we're going to be here Sunday morning at 1130. But then we ain't going out. Maybe we'll change, get something to eat, and we're going to come right back here because the year's not over yet. And we'll be here at 930 p.m. And the prophet will be here and we're going to come together. The praise team, the band, everybody's going to come together. And with one voice, with one uh, 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 personhood in the Holy Ghost, a strong leaving of 2023, and we're going to break into the new year like nothing before. So make sure you get here. Make sure you're logged on. Maybe those of you watching on the East Coast, watching in another nation, you get to celebrate New Year's twice. You can celebrate it on your time zone, and then you can stay up and celebrate it with us. But let's come into the new year. Let's close this one out together, and let's step into 2023 for together in the presence of God. So make sure that you're here with us. We'll be looking for you and looking forward to have you celebrating and joining with us. Also Friday, December 15th is our Christmas outreach. We always love to give back. Can we clap our hands and thank God for, for that? That's a special clap offering for the Christmas outreach. We want to be able to be a blessing. We are blessed to be a blessing. We want to be able to give and donate and we need uh, food items, toys, bikes, scooters, monetary donations, uh, volunteers to assist. If you got if you got kids, especially young men who are sitting at home on Christmas break playing video games, get them up, get them to the tabernacle, get, let, let them build, build some muscle, let them lift some food bags, let them put some bags in, in cars and let them be a blessing. Let them experience what it's like seeing a smile on a young child's face of getting something that may they weren't expecting to receive so we'll receive any volunteers that's from 10 to 3 friday december 15th right here at the place of grace and if you want to give you want to participate in that and you want to give a monetary donation right there at bishopmcclendon.com click on it for our christmas uh outreach you can give just designated whatever the money amount it, it's going to go to being a blessing to a family to a child bringing a smile on somebody's face in jesus name for the christmas season from the place of grace and if you need more information there's a number on your screen you can call 310-323-2600 that again that's 310-323-2600 and our operators who are our intercessors are standing by ready to receive your call for whatever help information prayer you need if you want more information about it give them a call and they will direct you in the proper way amen Amen. We're getting ready to go back into the worship experience this morning. God is speaking. God is moving in an unusual way. So make sure you keep your hearts open and let the Spirit of God bless you all day on into the week. Enjoy the worship experience. God bless you.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember in my grandma's church, we used to say, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to continue to worship and praise him for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. For his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Come on. Hey. I'm ready to dance before the Lord. Hallelujah. Get ready for my week. Hallelujah. Hey.
give him that worship, give him that praise. Tell him he's worthy.
like it. You say.
so we honor you, so we glorify you. That's why we come to lift Jesus high, to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's the highest praise. You might as well give it to him. Hallelujah. He deserves it. Will glory in your presence. No flesh will glory in your presence. No flesh will glory in your presence. But we came to exalt you, Jesus. All of the attention is on you, Jesus. All of the glory belongs to you, Jesus. Because you are holy. You are holy.
Everybody say 
you can stand on to stand on them please as we pray and if you don't have legs you can stand on then you may have them before you leave here we serve a God of miracles Father we bless you and we thank you we acknowledge that there is no God like you in heaven or in earth that indeed there is no God but you you are the true and living God thank you for your presence for it is your presence that makes the difference Moses said your presence is what distinguishes your people from all the other people on the face of the earth 
thank you for the integrity of your word for your word is alive and full of power and now we thank you for your people for they are your inheritance in the earth bless them today minister life and strength clarity illumination revelation grant us to be empowered for having been with you and we declare this a day of liberty and victory in the name of Jesus and all the people who agreed with the man of God said it is so now would you say amen and clap your hands once more and bless the come on do better than that bless the Lord God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And once again, we greet you in the strong name of Jesus. We know you have been greeted and saluted. And uh, I want to just take a moment briefly and apologize to you for the lateness with which I am taking the uh, platform today. We, we, we time, you know, we time our services and again we, we only do one service a week here and since we do only one we take our time with it uh, uh, because we have a lot to accomplish <laughs> uh, in that time but we still try to get me on at a certain time and I am never uh, I'm never lazy with my time nor am I uh, disrespectful with yours and so when I get here late there is a reason for it this morning we were on our way here and uh, I guess you know with with the, the stuff that goes on because this location is near the SoFi arena during football season that's a challenge in and of itself sometimes just getting and my guys have to reroute us but today in addition to that I guess the president was leaving uh uh, and so, you know, I got c caught in traffic. I sat in traffic 25 minutes. Uh, and my, you know, we got on a stretch of the high, of the freeway there where there was no exit. So we just had to wait. And I was uh, cussing, in, I mean, praying in the spirit. And uh, I was praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit. I was praying in the spirit and... Uh, uh, and uh, thinking to myself uh, the president is raising money and keeping me from raising mine so I was, no, I was, I was thinking uh, that uh, all would be well here and I know y'all laugh I was not cussing I was praying I was just seeing if you were paying attention in the name of Jesus and so I was, I was a few minutes late but I will make very wise use of your time I promise you and we will not uh, elongate the service later. But it's always good, uh, you know, to be in the presence of God's people. Look at your neighbor and remind them you're very blessed to be anywhere near me today. Remind them I am God's anointed. And anything good can happen near me. Yeah. And some of you were in the service on last week. You know, we... We, we are grateful here for the Spirit of God and how He continues to move through our various services. And this is one of those ministries where, you know, anything good can happen. We don't just say that. We, this place of grace is a place where anyone, we say, where whoever can be healed of whatever. Some of you are in the service last week. And you remember at the close of the service, I was trying to close it out and, and, and a word of knowledge came to me. And again, word of knowledge, for those of you who don't know, it's one of the manifestations of the Spirit spoken of in 1 Corinthians 12. It is a disclosure of, uh, of wisdom or knowledge from the Spirit of God concerning something that is going on. Jesus moved in this, the apostles moved in it you see it many times and so I was at the conclusion of the service and I was trying to finish it and the Lord gave me a word about a woman who had come here um, and she had a, 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 a condition and I was to pray for her how many of you remember that we were closing the service and 
I said, there's a woman here and, and I see that you've had a diagnosis that you're on your way to a doctor's. How many of you remember me saying this? And that you've got a doctor's appointment and uh, you've got news that is very disconcerting. And so the woman was, was, was right sitting in that area and she came up. How many of you were here? Let me see. She came up and she said it was her and she said the Lord told her to come here. Does anybody remember this? She said the Lord told her to come here and that I was going to pray for her when she came. Now, she didn't tell anybody that. I didn't know that. She didn't tell any of our people that. And she testified to that. And I prayed for her, laid my hands on her and said she would have a testimony. And her name is Cynthia Robinson. She says she was here last week. She said, Pastor called me up and had a word for me. It was a word from the Lord uh, and told me to come back after the doctor's appointment to tell what the doctor had to say. This was last Sunday. She came back and said, when the, when the, she went in, they did a biopsy. So, and, and I even said there was something there, but, but you know, it's going to be, she said, when they, this is her run. When they did the biopsy, the doctor went in with the needle. And when she did, she said it just disappeared while she was trying to remove it and she couldn't believe it. The woman is in the building. Where is she? Where, 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 is she here? Is she still here? Where are you at? Where? C come here, come here, come here. So they know I'm telling the truth. And you're far too normal for my Jesus. He deserves some worship. So I just, I just want, I just want, I just want, y'all can sit down. I just want you to, I just want to make sure that the people understand. You wrote this. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and once again, last Sunday you came here. You didn't, you didn't tell me you were coming. No. I didn't know you were coming. You didn't tell anybody. No. And the Lord spoke to you, and you said when the, the doctor went in with the needle, she said it just disappeared? Yeah, she said, because mm. at first I thought it was going to be gone, and I told her, I said, you're not going to find anything. She said, she, she. See, go ahead, just sit there and act like it's normal. Okay, just go ahead, sit there, act, act like it's normal. Go ahead. So, I, so she laughed. And she said, oh, okay. So, so she, I, the doctor, she, yeah, she thought another one of so those. So I said, now when you do that ultrasound, I say, when you don't see anything, don't put that needle in. She said, if I do the ultrasound and I don't see anything, I'm not going to put the needle in. So we laughed. And so anyway, they was, uh, as they were doing the ultrasound, she was telling her uh, assistant, she said, yes, it's right here. I see it. So when I started praying, talking to the Lord, I said, Lord, I know you said it was gone. I don't understand. I say, she's saying it's still here. So I said, anyway, I love you and I trust you, Lord. I don't understand, but I trust you. So she went in. After she did and everything, she went in. And she said, hmm. I said, what happened? What's wrong? She said, it just disappeared. When I went in. <laughs> Now, I need, I need people who believe in the power of God. If you don't forget you, I'm not, I'm not even interested in you. I need people who believe in the power of God to lift up their hands and give Jesus a praise in the house. your hand she, so she was saying some, one of her neighbors were watching on TV she said when he when, said when he was praying what language was that he was praying in because I didn't understand she said was it Hebrew I don't know I don't know it might have been Negro but I don't know what it, it whatever it was whatever whatever it was the spirit of God understood it I want us to lift our hands 
And I just want us to thank God because once again, I've told you time and time again, when the power of God manifests, when Jesus works miracles, he does not do it so that men can be celebrated. He does it so that people will know that Jesus is who he says he is. He is a healer. I said he is a miracle worker. So come on, lift your hands. Father, we bless you for that manifestation. It's, it's not the only one that we've seen. We see many, but it was so significant in that moment that we want to take this moment to thank you for being the God of your word. You are a healer. You are a miracle worker. And we bless you for it. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Do it now. Hey! God works. God works miracles. You may be seated in the presence of God. Look at your neighbor and say, anything good can happen here. No, no, you're not talking strong enough. Look at the other way because that neighbor wasn't listening to you. Say, anything good can happen here. Amen. We rejoice with you, Sister Cynthia, in the goodness of God in your physical body. And the people said, you know, it is, it is so important for you and I to understand as God's people that anything that concerns you, God is concerned with. And for so many years, the church seemed to uh, try to persuade people that God is only interested in your spiritual salvation, and he is, but he's also in, interested in your body's wellness. He's also interested in your physical and financial well-being. Uh, God is a God of the whole man, spirit, soul, body, and whatever concerns you concerns him, and the good news is whatever would ever concern you he has already made a way for that thing to be handled and settled would you look at your neighbor and remind them nothing ever occurs to God tell them that. no find your other neighbor tell them has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurs to God he is aware of everything yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in my kneecaps. He's, he's aware of everything. He's aware of everything that pertains to you and to me. Go to Psalm 37 very quickly. Just go there. As I was praying for you this week, look at your neighbor and tell them, glad to know somebody prayed for me this week. As I was praying for you this week, and inquiring of the Lord concerning your and my well-being, spirit, soul, and body, one of the th things he ministered to me was this in Psalm 37. Look at verse number three and four. Now, uh, I heard this in my spirit. And see, one of the things that I've learned is when you hear something in the spirit, when, when God speaks to you in spirit, then it is good for you to go to his word and make sure that what you heard lines up with his word number one but then number two what you find is when you go to the word the word of God will amplify and many times clarify what you've heard in your spirit that's why throughout the scripture you will hear God say if you pay attention if you heed my voice and my commandments in other words, my voice and what I say. Why? Because they work in tandem. They work together. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, He said, tell the people I'm going to delight them in these coming days. I said, I'm, go I'm going to delight my people in these days. I said, well, Lord, what do you mean delight them? And of course, a couple of scriptures came up. Now watch this. Psalm 37, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. And I love this. Trust and do. 
See, trust is something you do in the heart. But then he said, your trust should become an action. See, don't, you can't say, well, I'm trusting the Lord. Well, what are you doing that demonstrates that trust? Remember, faith is not just a conviction or a persuasion. It is conviction and persuasion plus corresponding action. Meaning an action that goes along with what you say you believe. Faith is not faith until it can be seen or heard. As long as it is within you, it is a belief. And God does not move on your belief. He responds to your faith. You, boy, I, he does not, he, God does not respond to your belief. The Bible says demons believe and tremble but but he says faith without works again the greek there is pistis faith a conviction or persuasion without works the greek there is ergon a corresponding action so a conviction or a persuasion without a corresponding action is dead are you there and i'll never forget years ago uh, when god took me through a faith exam he said son you have you're believing in certain areas he said, but your faith is dead because it doesn't have actions that go along with it. See, James tells us this. Faith without works is, are you there? I said, are you there? I said, are you there? Okay, and the Lord said to me, he said, son, and dead faith will do exactly what a dead body will do. Nothing. It'll just lay there. Are you still in the room? And that's when he said to me, many of my people's faith is DOA. It's dead on arrival. It's present, but it's not active because they're not doing anything with it. Nudge your neighbor and say, uh, you just learned more than you'd learn in most churches in an hour. Watch this. Verse number three. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the, dwell in the land. Watch this. And feed on his faithfulness wait a minute how do i feed on god's faithfulness through his word that's where he demonstrates his faithful now see this is where a lot of people begin this delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and a lot of people drop into it right there delight yourself in the lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart but he says first you got to trust in the lord then you got to act on what you say you're trusting in and then you've got to dwell in the land. Meaning, once you have done it, don't be moved. Stay there and feed on the faithfulness of God. Look at your neighbor and say, get three or four promises about God's faithfulness. Get three or four promises that cover what you're believing God to do and feed on it are you there i'll never forget when i was reading in the scripture and when when the lord showed me david beat goliath he had five smooth stones he only needed to use one are y'all there and the lord said to me any giant in your life you can defeat with five good promises from my word he said you may only need to use one but get five Are you there? Look at your neighbor and get them smooth. Well, well, what does that mean? Get the edges off of them. Get them in your spirit. Meditate on them until when you get hit, they come out. Look at your neighbor and say, get smooth with it. Watch this. And, 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 so, and so he says, delight yourself in the Lord. Watch this. And he will give you the desires of of your heart now real quickly go to Isaiah 58 because this is the two things and I don't have time to go through all of this because it's too much and it's a little late but I want you to see it and hold on to this because look at your neighbors say God's gonna delight you in the next few days now you're not talking strongly enough look at somebody and say you're gonna be delighted by something God does in your situation in the next couple of weeks now you're not talking strongly enough 
find somebody across the room just look at them and say God's going to delight you and your household before Christmas comes you're going you're going to be delighted by something God woo, does I feel the Holy Ghost hey on your behalf watch this Isaiah 58 I'm not trying to hype you I'm excited because I'm expecting something are you there no, no, ah, I don't, no, don't miss this don't miss this and see Jesus dealt with this principle in his earthly ministry it was the principle of the Sabbath and, 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 and the people that Jesus dealt with they were always trying to impose upon him the, their carnal understanding of the Sabbath are you still here uh, but the Sabbath was a day of rest. I don't want to get into all this. Uh, and see, the, Lord, the Bible says God blessed the seventh day because he rested on it. He didn't bless the seventh day above other days. We got, we got denominations fighting on, well, I'm a seventh day at venice where we worship on this day no 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 it's not the seventh day that's blessed it's the rest that's blessed the bible says he blessed the seventh day because he rested on it so it wasn't the day it was the rest look at your neighbor and say did you get that see what god blessed was the rest Meaning, whenever you and I are at rest, we are in the blessing. No, no, no. So, so God instituted a Sabbath. I'm about to read something here. God instituted a Sabbath to demonstrate to man, I've got you even when you're not working. See, work six days, but take the seventh off and rest and here's what I'm gonna show you that I will cover you when you're at rest just like when you're working I'm gonna show you that your prosperity is not connected to your work it is connected to you walking in my word are you there look at your neighbor and say the principle of rest is a kingdom principle it's a, it's a kingdom principle. And see, if you don't learn how to rest, then you will never see the kind of prosperity or blessing that God intends for you. Now, once again, it is important that we define rest as God defines rest. Because God's rest is not doing nothing. Where does, how does God... Woo! How does God define rest? Go to, he, go to Hebrews chapter 4. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. i got to hurry with this. Whew. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the example of disobedience. For the word. Everybody say for the word. No, 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 no. Look at you and say for the word. For the word of God is alive or living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of men's hearts now watch it watch the word don't watch me watch the word he said let us therefore be diligent to enter into that rest for the word ah so that's how i enter into the rest through the word so when i am saying what god is saying i am at rest when I am acting on the Word of God and not trusting my ingenuity, my discipline, my work ability, my brilliance, I am at rest. Rest is not doing nothing. Rest is doing only what God directs. Rest is saying what God has said even when you are confronted with adverse circumstances look at your neighbor and say anytime you're speaking the word 
God says you're at rest. No, I need you to get this. Look at your say, anytime you're speaking the word, God says you're at rest. No, why is that? Because you are trusting his word to do the work and not your ability. Anytime you act on God's word instead of what you want to do, you're at rest. Are you there? So you've got a bill to pay and you don't have enough and you start calling all your relatives. Look at your neighbor and say, you know, you know your relatives ain't got no money anyway. But you start, you start calling all your relatives trying to get them to do it. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not at rest. But you've got a need and you do what God has said do. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. God says, now you're at rest and then once you've given what are you doing you're feeding on his faithfulness you're reminding him of his promise God you said you'd supply all my need look at your neighbor and say that's rest no no no, no. look at that say now you're at rest Lord you let me tell you something it is impossible to have the word in your mouth and worry in your mouth at the same time I'd write that down if I were you it is impossible to have the word in your mouth and worry in your mouth at the same time are you still there now, I want you to look at a person next to you and tell them if you will rest you're gonna see something supernatural happen in your circumstance and God is going to delight you look at Isaiah 58 13 he says if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day in other words if you will honor my rest and call the Sabbath a delight oh oh doing what God says is a delight watch this the holy day of the Lord honorable he's not just talking about Sunday or Saturday he's talking about you entering into the rest see the Bible says on on the seventh day God rested from all ah so to enter into his rest you got to rest from all yours Did you get that? So you, to enter into his rest, you got to rest from all yours. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. Tell him, stop trying to figure it out. Squeeze it again. Tell him, stop trying to determine where it's going to come from. Look at your other neighbor. Tell him, stop trying to figure out who God's going to use. You just rest and watch God do his part he's going to use somebody he's going to make the way straight watch this I love this and if you honor him watch this not doing your own ways watch this not finding your own pleasure nor speaking your own words don't speak yours speak his working on somebody's miracle here are you are you still with me watch this and not speak your own words then you shall delight yourself I just found out how to delight myself in the Lord he said if you honor my rest and stop speaking your words stop speaking mine somebody say then watch this you will delight yourself in the Lord now, I'm almost done with this. Look at your neighbor and say, watch your toes. Somebody may run in the building here. I'm not kidding. Look at your neighbor and say, watch your toes. Somebody may run in the building here. Watch this. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, 
and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth watch this and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father the mouth of the Lord has spoken it I want you to get this because this 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 it has to be unpacked he said if you do this watch this he said I'm gonna start feeding you not with the results of your work I'm gonna start getting your inheritance to you no 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 you no, no, no you, 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 you didn't get it I'm gonna start getting your inheritance to you remember an inheritance is not something you work for an inheritance is something that has already been worked for and you receive your portion by your knowledge by your knowledge of the will look at your neighbor and say you get your inheritance not by working for it it's already been worked for you get your inheritance through your knowledge of the will when you know what's been worked for already and you know what has been left for you as an inheritance I feel the power of God you get it because you get it because you know it's yours I heard this in my spirit he's I heard the Lord say he's about to start breaking off pieces of your inheritance now some of you some of you are looking at me crazy some of you are looking at me crazy I, I, didn't, I didn't want to do all this uh, but but let me just go here first Peter go to first Peter 1 blessed be the God verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance you, you, what, you see some Christians don't know you were born into a family that has an inheritance no you didn't hear you were begotten to an inheritance are you there I said are you there watch this to an inheritance incorruptible and un I can't take it to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you now when it says reserved in heaven for you it doesn't mean you'll get it when you get to heaven you won't need it in heaven everything there is already covered it's already paid for it's already supplied it is reserved for you to draw down down here when you know what you have a right to look at the, look at verse 4 to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away reserved in other words God is saying if it's for you nobody can get it but you and even if you miss a couple of seasons of receiving it's still on reserve for you if you decide to pull it down I have come in the name of Jesus to release somebody's inheritance if you will dare to rest and say what God says lift your hands lift them now say this out loud in the name of Jesus I have an inheritance Jesus laid it up for me I am an heir of God 
and a joint heir with Jesus. What is his is mine. We have the same name. Lift, lift your hand. We have the same. See, the Bible says the whole family in heaven and earth is named according to his name. Look, woo, look at your hey, look at your neighbor and say, we have the same name. Now say it out loud. In the name of Jesus, I call forth my inheritance this week. Not just what I work for, but what's already been worked for. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody, God help me, somewhere is on their way to you with a piece of your inheritance. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be delightful when the bill gets paid off when the matter is settled in your favor when the judge rules in your favor even though you're the underdog I don't know who I'm talking to hey lift your hands Father I pray armed with your word I pray you said to me you are going to do some delightful things and you're going to delight your people in these days you just showed us how to get in position we are entering now into your rest come on lift your hands now, as we act on your word as we worship you in our tithe in our seed in our giving whatever action you speak to us as we sow into the kingdom. You said it. I didn't say it. You said give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. You have already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Our giving doesn't cause you to give to us. You've already done that. Our giving causes men in the earth and women in the earth to align themselves with your purpose and plan for our prosperity and our destiny. And I pray now, I need you to lift your hands that not one family, not one husband and wife, not one individual who is looking to you and trusting you in this week shall be made ashamed. I declare inheritance is released, harvest comes, and favor is their portion. Would you lay your hand on somebody and tell them you are highly favored this week? Highly favored. This week, something supernatural, God, is breaking forth for you this week. And yeah, I'm taking a minute with it because somebody's breakthrough depends on it. your hands are lifted whatever the Spirit of God tells you to do you do it if you're watching me live streaming if you're a tither if you're a sower this is the moment that we honor God we worship God with our giving and this is how we enter into his rest I'm telling you this is how the kingdom of God operates it's no game it's no gimmick it is God's way of giving his people the advantage he says, I am the Lord who teaches you how to prosper and lead you in the way that you should go. That word literally means to get the advantage. Right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a donate button. There's a way for you to sow. If God is so leading you, now is the time to do it. Just click it and sow as God has directed you. Or you can text give C-E-M-M -M to 41444. Just follow the prompts and give as the Spirit of the Lord has directed you to do. There's a number on your screen, 310-323-2600. I'm talking to somebody right now. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. You ask God for an answer. He just sent you a word. 310-323-2600. Call the number on the screen. I've got trained prayer ministers ready to agree with you. Now listen, if you never sow anything, we're going to pray for you. 
but I urge you to mix your faith and your giving and watch what happens. 310-323-2600. Call that number and sow as God has directed you to sow. If you've got the Bishop McClendon app, you can sow that way. You can download it from Google or, or uh, iTunes. If you're here in the tabernacle and you're giving, if you're making out a check, make it payable to CEMM, Clarence E. McClendon Ministries. If you're giving cash, the envelope is for it. And if you desire to do this on a bank or credit card, I've got some people in the aisles ready to assist you. Just get up right now and go and sow as the Spirit of God directs. If you're a tither, you know what to do. A tenth of everything that comes into my hands and yours, if you're a child of the King, belongs to God. I bring it to God gladly because I've learned how to prosper God's way. Perhaps you're sowing in a first fruit. Maybe God has already increased you in some way and you want to sow a seed that says thank you maybe you're sowing in the prophet seed or some other way but however you do it make sure you do it looking to the Lord and trusting him for your harvest and your inheritance for it will surely come as you feed on his faithfulness and the people said amen and amen let's give as unto the Lord let's worship and we will give with joy don't let this moment pass you by in Jesus name hallelujah mm. cast all your care cast all your
say, why don't you cast off? Find it and say, why don't you cast off? Why don't you? Glory to God. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, he cares for you. And look at your other neighbor and say, and he knows exactly what you're going through. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me, give me, uh, give me 30 minutes. Uh, and then I'll start preaching. Give me... Give me, no, give me 30 minutes. Give me, give me, 30. can you clap your hands and thank God for these musicians and these singers? Come on, show them some love. They are getting better all the time and I thank the Lord for them. They're already good, getting better all the time. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18. Now, I am aware that I am beginning a little later than usual and so I'm going to ask you to give me, uh, did you understand that? All right, that's how much time I need, praise the Lord. Whatever, whatever your interpretation of that was, that's what I need. No, uh, give, me, give me 30 minutes, give me 30 minutes to teach, and then I will close. I'm going to have to amend some things, but I'm going to uh, get through this today. And of course, last week, uh, we had a move of the Spirit of God, and I did not teach. That was last week, right? And I did not teach, but the Spirit of God certainly moved. But I'm in an assignment. I've been teaching on GPS. I've been teaching on the subject of gender, paternity, and sexuality. The Spirit of the Lord directed me to teach in this area. And we're in the area of the teaching now that is dealing with paternity. And again, there, and one of the things the Spirit of the Lord impressed upon me is that part of the reason for the attack on the spirit of paternity is because we, the church, number one, have not fully understood it and applied it properly, and therefore the world with its uh, vacillations in understanding uh, has begun to uh, process and interpret the way they want to, uh, what is to be proper and appropriate in culture and elsewhere. And so in the beginning of this teaching, one of the things that we, we demonstrated, and I'm going to take you back to it Again, not because I want to, but because the Spirit of the Lord directed me to. And in the beginning of this, we articulated the fact from the Scripture that if you want to understand any of these things, uh, gender, marriage, paternity, sexuality, from God's standpoint, you have to go back to the beginning. Because there you have God's original intention for all things. And one of the things we noted is that we really only have in the scripture, we only really have about two and a half chapters of original intention. What do you mean by that? By the conclusion of Genesis chapter 2, man has fallen from the state of, of his original creation. And the rest of the scripture really is about God's plan to restore man to his original intent and beyond in Christ Jesus. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. Now, if you've been with us in this series, you know that when I refer to man, I'm referring to God's definition of man, not ours. Because God's definition of man is male and female, not just male. 
it, God, the Bible says God made them male and God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So man is the combination of male and female. It is not just male. Are you still here? Uh, and there's so much, and if you don't understand that, I can't help you with that today. You can go back and look at the teachings over the last several weeks and you will find and understand what is being said. But one of the things that we notice, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you go, I said go to Genesis 2, first of all. Uh, and, and it says in verse 15, then God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now remember, when God is speaking to man here, he is speaking to male and female in one spiritual body. There are not two entities in front of him. There is one. How do you know that? Because according to the scripture, the female part of man is not extracted from the whole until later in this very uh, later in this very chapter. And once again, we have spoken of the fact that when the scripture says God took one of Adam's ribs, that is a horrific translation of the original Hebrew word there. The original Hebrew word there is selah, which means a side, a chamber, a door, or an access way. So it is, it is an architectural term that is more a reference to DNA. It's not a rib. God extracted the DNA from the whole and made the female part of man into an entity separate from the whole. Are you here? Huh. So, so, now watch, 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 watch. And the Lord God said, verse 18, it is not good that man should be alone. Once again, the, the Hebrew word there means solitary, not alone. He was not alone. God was with him. So God would not say he's alone if indeed he walks with God in the cool of the day. So what he's saying is it is not good for man to be solitary or singular, I will make him a helper comparable to him. We went through this the last time we talked. Out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Now, once again, we have corrected the fact here through the scripture that Adam does not name the animals. They already have names. The Bible says God brought them to Adam to see what he would name them and whatever Adam named each one that was its name, meaning it had a name. And God brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. What is happening here? God is making sure that he and his creation are saying the same thing so that things on earth are exactly as they are in heaven as God created them. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. So Adam gives the names. Why? Because Adam has been given dominion in the earth. God can't name things in the earth. He has, y'all got to hear me. He has delivered that authority to Adam. So are you there? So if it's going to be that way in the earth, Adam has to say it, not God. Thy word, O oh God, is forever settled in heaven. It is not settled on earth. It is settled in heaven. Things are in heaven as God says they are. Things are on earth only as God says they are when some man or woman on earth says on earth what God says. That's when things on earth become as they are in heaven. Are you in the room with the man of God or what? So, so, so now watch it. This is important. This is not just uh, poetry or prose. This, this is God showing you and I how things work. Why? It's so important. Oh, 
uh, I know I am, but it's just there's so much. So, so, so you see, he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called them, that was its name. So Adam and God are in agreement on the name. Now, why is that important? So, so Adam gave names of the cattle, to the birds of the air, beasts of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And I went through this again last week. God says comparable, not compatible. And one of the problems with our unions is we look for people who are compatible to us, not comparable to us. Are y'all here? See, someone who is compatible to you agrees with most of your stuff. Ain't nobody saying that to me. But someone who is comparable to you has the other part of your side. So they're generally not going to see everything like, they, like you see because they're not compatible. They're comparable. They are there to create your halfness to wholeness and to show you another perspective. And because most of us are so in love with ourselves, even though we're not doing us any good, we tend to reject the comparable help that God sends looking for compatible help. But I'll get to that in the marriage section in a minute. Ebo Shah, come on, talk in tongues. Say amen or ouch or oh man or something. Lord have mercy, whatever it is, say it. What? Come on, grab your neighbor's head and say, we are all learning here. And none of us are flawless. Come on, say it again. So, 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 so watch this. So, so watch this. So, so the Lord God calls a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and again takes, extracts a part of himself. Now, now here's the part where I need you to, to, to use your spiritual understanding. It says, look at verse 20. Then he took the rib, closed it up, that he meant, and he brought her to the man. Now remember, he had just brought all the animals to the man, and they were together in one spiritual body. So he names them. Now he has extracted the female part of man, the whole, and given a completely separate body to that part of man. Now he brings her to him to see what he will call her. Just, are you there? Just like he brought all the, what? Because whatever Adam calls it, that is what it is going to be. Now notice, he does not call her Eve. Eve is the name that is given to her after the fall, which means Eve is not God's idea. The, the, with the we go to it. so Eve is not God's idea. Eve is what a fallen male calls his companion. See, God did not create Adam and Eve. God created Adam. A fallen Adam created Eve. Now, I, now you say, Bishop, you're splitting words, you're making differences. Without, no, 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 no. When you understand the principle here, you will understand. So, so notice why he, he says, and he named her woman. What? What? It's in the Bible. And he said, this is now bone of my bone. Oh, God. Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Notice, not because she has a womb. She is not called woo man because she has a womb. She is called woo man because Adam is aware this is the other part of me. She came out of me. She and I are actually one. We are not two. We are actually one. She 
is in my womb. Are you here? Now watch this. Because she was taken out of bed. Now look at the scripture. And for this cause. Therefore shall a man leave his father. That's what Jesus quotes over in Mark. And for this cause, notice, there is nothing about marriage there. Bishop, are you saying we shouldn't get married? No, 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 no. I'm just saying don't impose marriage on this because God didn't say nothing about marriage. I can't go. See, you think you know where I'm going and you don't. I'm not saying you should... You should eternally coexist in, in cohabitation and not do it. But, but the reason you're to do it is not the reason religion has taught you to do it. The reason you're to do it is not to please God. The, re- <laughs> the reason you have a ceremony and make it legal is not to please God. Well, why is it then? <laughs> About two weeks, I'm going to tell you exactly why it is. I, 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 can't, I can't go there today. I can't because if I go there today, I won't be able to get out. But I promise you, I'm going to show you from the Bible. This is not something I came up with. And, the, and see, one of the reasons we are having such struggles and such, such, such problems now grabbing the thing is because we have not defined it as God defined it. The world has defined it as something else. And now we've got nowhere to grab to get it back in order because nobody knows what the real deal is. Are you there? I got one place to get to today and I'm going to get there. By God in Jesus' name. Watch this. Now watch. Watch. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Now we said this last week. Well, the week before because I didn't teach last week. When God says, and for this cause, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. When Jesus picks it up, go, go, to, go to Mark 10. God help me. Go to Mark 10. I'm I'm trying to make sure that I leave no stone unturned and that everybody can follow the word of God here and see it. Go go to Mark, what did I say? 10. Then he rose from there, came to the region of Judea, and he taught them. The Pharisees came and asked him, is it lawful for man to divorce his wife? Go on. And he answered and said, what did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a certificate of divorce. And Jesus said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female for this reason. Shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined? So he's quoting what God said in Genesis. Can you see it? So, so, so he says, Moses allowed this because of the hardness of heart. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. In other words, God made man male and female. And for this reason, for what reason? Marriage? No. Because God made man male and female for this reason. The male and the female are to come back together because that's when man is whole again. That's when you have an actual man. In the earth again. Now what is the purpose of that rejoining? Let's look and understand what God says next. Go back to Genesis 2. He says, and for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Now here's the the, the thing. Look right up here at me. (laughs) At the time that God says shall a man leave father and mother, there is no father in the man project on the earth yet. Go, I'll give you a minute. 
Think about it. He's just created them. They have no offspring. So then there aren't any fathers. At least not as we define father. Still here? Are, 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 y'all, are y'all questioning that or do you see that? Okay, I just want to make sure because, you know, it's like, it's like open heart surgery. Before you go deeper, we need to show you're anesthetized. Because I'm operating and I'm killing sacred cows and destroying religious idols and obstacles and getting actually to truth. Because the word is truth. Still here? Okay. So, ah, blessed be the name of the Most High. So, for this reason, shall a man leave his father or mother? The word here that is used for father is the Hebrew word ab. It means chief, principal, foundation, source of a thing. It means the generator or the generation. Are you still here? The Greek equivalent is pater, P-A-T-R, from the Latin root, which signifies a nourisher, protector, or upholder. So this is now the first mention, Genesis 2.24, of the word father. And again, in scriptural interpretation, there is a law of first mention. The law of first mention says anytime a word is used for the first time in scripture, whatever the connotation in which it is used, the first time in scripture carries with that word every other time it is used in scripture. There may be other connotations added to it, but the initial use is the foundational use and meaning of the word. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. So when God says here, for this reason, gentlemen, leave father and mother, and there is no father or mother that has produced yet after the natural, the question is, what are they the father of? Because it's not children. Yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, because they don't have any children. Well, God's setting it up. No, 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 no. What had God put on man when he created him? The blessing. The blessing. And the blessing is fruitfulness, multiplication. We went through that, remember? Be fruitful, multiply. So he puts up on man this power of fruitfulness multiplication, authority and dominion, the ability to get on top and stay on top of anything, spirit, circumstance, situation. Man is given dominion. And again, when man is given dominion, male and female are together. Which means, which means, when God separates female from male, part of that blessing goes with her. And he has the other part of it. Are you in the room? So, (laughs) so, what is man, male and female, and once they are separated, the male given paternity over the blessing. Remember, the word father means source, <laughs> principle, foundation, the place where a thing is generated. Now remember, God does not bless the earth. God creates the earth, creates man, puts the blessing on man, puts man in the garden, eastward in Eden, 
and tells him to be fruitful and multiply, meaning take this blessing and spread it throughout the rest of the planet. I'm not going to bless the earth. I need somebody to hear me. I'm not going to bless the earth. I have given you authority to bless the earth. So if the earth is going to be blessed, you have to do it. And that's why he said, it's not good that man should be alone. I need more than one blesser down here. I need somebody to be able to get in agreement on stewarding this blessing. Wave at me if you understand what I'm saying. Remember what the blessing is. I said, remember what the blessing is. Remember what the blessing is. Go to Genesis 1, 26, quick. I got to remember what the blessing is. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female. He created them. Then he blessed them and said, be fruitful. Are you still here? Are you still here? And when he says he blessed them, remember there is one being standing in front of him, male and female together, but they are one. And he puts this blessing on them, fruitfulness, multiplication, fullness, subjugation, dominion, fruitfulness, the assured and promised harvest on every seed, multiplication, rapid increase, fullness, constant progress toward capacity under overflow, subjugation, the authority and ability to get on top of any circumstance, situation, thing, or spirit, and dominion. The wisdom, knowledge, authority, and ability to remain on top of any circumstance, situation, thing, or spirit. So that's what they're walking in. Are you here? And they are to take that and whatever comes, they've got authority over it. Whatever hits them, they can win. And the enemy says, I have to stop this. If I don't stop this, the whole planet will be blessed and I will have nowhere to reside, nowhere to operate, nowhere to function. Are you here? So what does he do? He separates the two entities with the blessing. You didn't get what I just said. He separates the two entities with the blessing and gets both of them to start saying things other than what God has said about themselves. He separates the two with the blessing and he gets both of them to start saying different things than God has said about them, about themselves. Once they get separated, God comes looking and says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam says, I heard you walking and I was naked and I hid myself from you. And God says, who told you you were naked? Up till now, what I called an elephant, you called an elephant. What I called a giraffe, you called a giraffe. What I called a zebra, you called a zebra. Up till now, what I called woman, you called woman. Who told you? That you were something other than what I called you. Now this is what all this gender confusion is about. It's not about sex. It's not about gender. It's not about giving people the right to be what they want. It is about keeping the blessing from operating on the earth. So Satan is free to move. where he was and I love you listen you can live any kind of way you want I'm not judging or condemning anybody I'm just speaking the word of God and God did not put that blessing on male and male and he did not put that blessing on male and female he put it on male and female put it on man 
which is the joining of the two. Are you in the room or what? And one of the things we must understand about God, and I've said this before, and I don't have time to go into it. Now, I need about 20 more minutes to get into it. I don't, so I'll just pick up here. You have to understand this about God, that God is a, our God is a God of order. <laughs> he is a God of order. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? He's a God of, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll do that before I go there. Okay, the Lord just, Ozer just told me, go back and make this point. Because, I, I, I mean, so, so now get this, get this. So when Adam, before the fall, is calling the female part of him woman, he is asserting their unity. He's saying, we're one. We're together. Every time he says woman, he says, you came from me. We're together. We're one. Every time she say, he says, come here, woman. <laughs> it's not derogatory. It's not negative. He is asserting you and I have the same stuff. You and I are carrying the same blessing. But the moment the fall happens and he calls her Eve, he stops asserting their union. Because he, no, he is no longer speaking God's word about her. He is now speaking his. Are you there? So this is why you can't take what God has created and just call it anything you want. I'm going to say that again. Okay, now I'm going to go to, to there and then I'll end there and I'll stop there. You can't take what God has created and call it anything you want. Now, why is that? Why is that? Well, it's not just, it is order, it is authority, it is dominion, but it, it's deeper than even that. Go back now to... To Mark, uh, what was that, Matthew 10? Is that where I was, Mark 10? Yeah, go back there quick. Uh, I would not wish this assignment upon anyone. I, I, I received it from the Lord. I have to teach it, but I'm telling you, this thing is so involved. Uh, and, and, and the creation is so out of order that it's almost like you've got to find everything and qualify it just in order to get it. But I am going to finish it. And if I am teaching this until Jesus splits the eastern sky, before I, I'm going to finish this. If you stay home, I'll be here by myself yelling at you through the screen. If you get tired of it, I am not stopping till he tells me I'm done. You still here? God bless you. <laughs> Mark chapter 10. Oh. Mm. oh, no. You know what? I'm sorry. Go to Mark 12. Go to Mark 12. Oh. Go to Mark 12. Verse number 18. Then some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to him and they asked him saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind and leaves no children, his brother should take his wife, raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife, dying left no offspring. The second, so on, so on, till there were seven. She had married all seven. Look at verse 23. Therefore, in the resurrection, when they rise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her as a wife. Now, again, this is the law of Moses. And the law of Moses was because the blessing was in the male progenitor or the male offspring that if a man and his wife were married, the man died, then the brother would marry the wife and raise up a child from the marriage. Seven had her. 
and she still has no issue. So he says, so they ask, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? And look at verse 24. Jesus answered and said to them, are you not therefore mistaken? The King James says, do you not therefore greatly err? In other words, he says, you are in great error. You are in great error about spiritual things because you do not know the scriptures nor the power of God. Notice what he says. He says the reason there is tremendous error about spiritual things is because number one, don't, people don't know the scriptures. Meaning they don't know what God did originally. They don't know how he did but then number two, he says, it's because you don't understand the power of God. Now, children, pay attention. Give me five minutes and I'll be done. Where is the power of God? The power of God is in the word of God. The power of God is in the word of God. So one of the reasons there is so much error is because people don't understand the scriptures, but then even those of you who do understand the scriptures, you do not have a revelation of the power of God. How God gets stuff done. Done. Quick. Mm. Hebrews 1 3 says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. Years ago, the Spirit of God said to me, Son, pay attention to the order there. I didn't say the power of my word, I said the word of my power. I am communicating to you that my word is the expression of my power or my word has my power in it, which is why the word is called the seed of the word because the life of every seed is on the inside, not on the outside. It's not in the husk. This is why Jesus says the letter, the skin, kills, but the spirit, the inside, gives life. See, this is why you can quote scripture and kill people. But if you understand the spirit of scripture, you want to lift people and restore them. Let me go on. Let me go on. He upholds all things by the word of his power. John 1, 1. I'm going somewhere with this. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the and the word was, and the word was, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the word's glory. We beheld the word's manifestation. We beheld his glory uh, as the glory. Huh? Uh, well, in the beginning was the word. Well, well, let, me, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me read it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He the word was in the beginning with God. Watch this. All things were made through him. So all things were made through the living word. Talk to me. And without the living word, nothing was made that was made. So without the living word, nothing that was made was made. Which means anything that was made was made through the power of the living word. Watch this. In the living word was life. And the life that was in the living word was the light of men. And the light that is in the living word shines in darkness. And the darkness Comprehend that word in the Greek literally means cannot overtake. 
the light shines in darkness and once the word hits darkness, the darkness cannot stop the life that is in the word. You do greatly err because you don't understand the power that's in what I call a thing. No, you didn't get it. You do greatly err because you don't know the power that's what's in what I say. When I say a thing, in what I say is the power to make what I said manifest even in the darkness. No, you're not. This is why we can't let men call themselves women. We can't let males call themselves females. Because in what God said is the power to change whatever you think you are into what he actually created you to be. Did you get what I just said? I'm about to preach myself out of my clothes. What happened? Okay. Isaiah 55. I, 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 I get this here. Isaiah 55, verse number 11. Look at your neighbor and say, he has one more scripture and he's done. Isaiah 55, verse number 8. Watch this. Isaiah 55. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Oh, that tells me something about what makes a man unrighteous. It's what he's thinking. That's another lesson. And the unrighteous man, let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy up on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Watch, watch how, how you return. Here it is. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. In other words, you and I don't have the same thoughts. We don't think alike. Nor are your ways my ways. In other words, and the way I get things done is not the way you get them done. So if I'm going to change something, I'm going to change it a different way than you would change it. You would change it by laws and pickets and legislation. No, my ways are not yours. For as, high, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Four, that really should read, but as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. So hear what God said. Listen, my ways are higher than yours and my thoughts are higher than yours. But as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, verse 11, and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes the earth, makes the earth bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, don't go any further, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Here's what he said. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. But just like the rain comes down and does something, my word comes down. And when my word comes down, what my word does when it comes down is my word brings you my thoughts. And my word brings you my way of getting things done. Because any, anytime I'm going to get something done, I'm going to get it done by my word. Watch. Watch. So shall my word be. Oh, children, I'm done. That goes forth from my mouth. Watch this. It shall not return to me void. Meaning you got to send it back to me. So if I say it, you have to say it back. I have sent my word so you can send it back to me. I have not sent my word just so you can hear it. I have sent my word so you can say it. 
Watch. And it shall not return to me void. But watch this. On the return, it shall accomplish. Wow. What I please. So I called you a man. And if you call you a male, like I called you a male, on the way back, that word will start working in your spirit to transform whatever ideas you have about you. They will line up with what I said about you because you are now saying what I said and my power it's in my word. Watch this. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. Now, don't miss this. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. There is a colossal revelation that every word that God has sent to us, he has sent to accomplish something. And when we will use that word, it will prosper in the thing for which God sent it because he sent it for something. I called you a male so you could be one. If you say you are, you will be. I called you a female so you could be one. I called you holy so you could say you are. You're not listening and it'll manifest. I called you healed so you can say so and you'll be healed. I called you blessed so you can say so. Because you are going to have what you say. Not what God said about you. I'm going to say that again. Because you are going to have what you say. Not what God said about you. You will only have what God said about you when you say what God has said about you. Because he said you'll have lay your hands upon yourself. God's word is in his power. I mean God's power is in his word. And that's why the kingdom of God cannot compromise with the nomenclature of the world. You don't like me. I don't care. I love you, but I am not called to be liked. The Spirit of God taught me over 20 years ago that one of the greatest deliverances any preacher can get is the deliverance from public opinion. I have been delivered from your opinion about me. I really have. And, and I love you, but I'm, I'm not trying to be arrogant. And what that means is I don't believe you when you tell me that I'm wonderful. Because <laughs> I know if there is anything wonderful in me, it's him. And I don't believe you when you tell me that I'm horrible. Because what you say about me doesn't make a nickel's worth of dog meat difference in relation to who I am. I am who he says I am. The more you talk about me, the more I look in the word and find out who I am. 
And I answer you back with the word. That's why God said no weapon formed against you can prosper. Watch it. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment. Every tongue that makes a conclusion about you that I haven't made. Shall be condemned. Watch this. This is a part of your inheritance. Y'all aren't hearing me. This is a part of my inheritance. A part of my inheritance is not to be what you say I am. This is a part of your inheritance. As a servant of the Lord, God says, and your righteousness comes from me. Lay your hands upon yourself. When the Lord told me to start teaching this, I said, God, please. <laughs> he said, I need your voice and I have revealed these things to you and you must now speak them. But he said to me very clearly, he said, you're not, the objective of this is not for you to try to change people's minds. I'm not trying to change your mind. If you have a lifestyle you want to live you are free to live it as a man of God I have a responsibility to tell you you're free to live it and I will not judge nor will I condemn you for living it but I also have a responsibility to say what God's word says and then let you choose how to live but what we cannot do is be silent when we know what God's word says you see, there is no one who is not being transformed out of something. <laughs> see, and that's the thing about this gospel. This gospel is not for satisfied people. This gospel is for people who are desiring to be changed, desiring to be transformed, desiring to be more tomorrow than they were yesterday even if yesterday was good and so I do not judge nor do I condemn I say if you want to be changed come along with us because God is changing us all and conforming us into the image of his dear son the fact of the matter is everybody has something that they need to be changed out of. None of us were born the way God intended us to be. We all have to be born again. And this is why Jesus looked at a man and said, don't be amazed that I tell you, you have to be born from above that's what it actually means you must be born from above I want to pray for you the Lord told me that there would be people watching me just to see what I would say he told me there'd be people who would hear this boy's preaching this stuff we're gonna get him and some of you that tuned in to get me got got yourself because there's something about the word of God when you hear it truth is altogether irresistible you may not like me you may not like church you may not even like church folks there are some I could do without not here of course But the fact of the matter is, truth, when you hear it, it won't let you alone. It'll stay with you. It'll work on you. And that's my job. It's just to sow the word and to let the Spirit of God do what he says. Would you lay your hands upon yourself? If you pray in the Spirit, I'm going to ask you to pray in the Spirit for a minute. 
I've said on a number of occasions, you may not like me, I love you, no matter who you are, where you are, what you've done, how long you've been doing it. I don't judge or condemn you. But I'm telling you, you can't cancel me. I'm born of the Spirit of God. And I've been sent with a word from God. And I want to pray for you. There are some of you, you're watching me, you're listening to me. And quite frankly, you were surprised because you thought I was going to be one of those judgmental, condemning damning preachers who just damns your soul to hell no 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 i have come to share the light of the word of god with you and i'm praying now that god the holy spirit will do what i cannot do what no preacher can do and that is to lead you further into truth jesus said when he the spirit of truth has come he will take of what is mine and show it to you. He said he will guide you into all truth. Here, let's you and I make a deal right here. Let's pray that the Spirit of God will show us what the truth is. I'm willing to take that risk. How about you? You think your way is right? You think you're living right? You think... The way you think about it is the only way it is. Let's agree to let the Holy Spirit lead us into truth. And I'm absolutely certain that what he says will be the right thing. Do I have any people who will pray with me today? Would you pray with me today? If you pray in the Holy Spirit, I want you to pray right now that every person under the sound of my voice concerning these things will be led further into truth. Can we agree on that? Jesus said, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything they ask, it shall be done for them. Come on, pray in the Spirit. Father, I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every family, every young man, every young woman who is tormented and burdened who is confused not knowing which way is up which way is down which way is right I pray in the name of Jesus that by your word today you will lead us all further into truth and I believe that at the end of that journey Jesus of Nazareth will be seen to be who he says he is and he will do what he says he does he is a transformer of life so I pray that every individual in the sound of my voice would be transformed he is a restorer of life and so I pray that you would restore life to every man, woman, boy and girl who will dare to believe you He is a provider of life. And so I pray, oh God, that you would provide. And let every individual in the sound of my voice know that forgiveness and remission and life has been made available to them. He said, behold, I set before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life lift your hands everywhere just lift them just lift them in this building lift them if you're watching me live streaming lift them I want you to say these words out loud say Lord Jesus you are the giver of life you are the reconciler you are the one that has made us one again with God I come to you just as I am and believing that you will cause me to be conformed more and more into your image I receive you and I declare your death paid in full for my sin 
my sins are remitted and your resurrection is the evidence it is the receipt that your sacrifice on my behalf was accepted and therefore I am not trusting in myself in my work I am trusting in Jesus' finished work on my behalf and I declare I am accepted in Christ Jesus amen and amen somebody shout unto God shout unto God with a voice of triumph Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will take this word and wherever men and women need to hear it, whether they heard it today or whether they'll hear it six months from now, that it falls into the hands and upon the ears of every individual for which you have purposed it. In the name of Jesus, if you agree with that, clap your hands and thank the Lord for it. I want us very quickly to minister communion to you. you have the communion elements open them if you do not have them raise your hand usher stay ready I'm, I, I will utilize you fully thank you for your patience and for your maturity in receiving the word of God scripture says the bread which we bless the cup which we bless is how we partake commune the Greek word literally means to become benefactors receive the benefits of the finished work of Jesus the Bible says that Jesus took the bread and blessed it and said this is my body given for you and then after that he took the cup and said this cup is the new covenant, the new agreement in my blood. We have learned here that this is not just a sacrament and it's not just an ordinance. It is the wisdom of God for the new creation. It is one of the ways that we receive, for lack of a better word in the spirit, a download of what Christ has finished on our behalf. Paul said, in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and following, he said, when this is done and people properly discern the Lord's body, he said, if you properly discern, if you don't properly discern, he said, many are weak and many are sick and many sleep, which means that when what we're doing here is properly discerned, strength flows to lives and bodies, healings flow. I received healing taking communion. You can't talk me out of it. I know what the power of this is. And so, as we bless it and we partake of it, understand that when you take this bread, you are receiving by faith the body that took your sin and mine, your sickness and mine, your lack and poverty and mine. And the Bible has recorded, according to the operation of God, that you and I were with Christ Jesus through the entire process that heaven has recorded that you have already passed from death to life all you have to do is receive it not of work which you do but because of what Jesus did and then when we take the cup that's when we receive that resurrected body 
1 Corinthians 15 teaches that there was one Jesus, but literally two bodies. It was sown one way and raised another. 1 Corinthians 15, 35 through 45, read it. Many Christians are amazed to hear it, but it's as clear as day. And so when we take the cup, we receive the benefits of that new creation, the resurrected Jesus. Father, I bless the bread and the cup, and I declare that every benefit, every favor, every blessing of the new creation and the new covenant flows to your sons and daughters today and all this week. In the name of Jesus, lift that bread and say, Lord, I receive the body you gave for me. I declare my sins are remitted. I declare my body is restored, made whole. And I declare in every area my need is met. I thank you for this. In Jesus' name, let's all eat together. Lift the cup. Say this out loud. Say, Lord, I receive the new, the other side of the situation. I declare I am on the victory side in the name of Jesus. And I boldly confess as you are so am I in this world in Jesus name amen let's all drink together look at your neighbor and tell them you have the right legally to walk in righteousness look at your neighbor and say you have the right legally to recover from every attack, every sickness, every disease. Look at your neighbor, tell them you have the right to expect your need to be met. No matter what the situation, in Jesus' name. Now tell them, receive it and believe it. Clap your hands one more time and give Jesus. I'm going to ask many of you that are watching me live streaming and some of you that are here because I know that at the conclusion of the word, there are people who desire to sow into the word. Now you're under no compulsion, you're under no force, but I know that the scripture teaches once the word of God is taught, there are those who desire to sow into that word because something has been received, something has been known. We do this all the time here at the Place of Grace. This is not a coercion and you are under no compulsion. But there are times when a word is ministered and the spirit of God prompts people to sow into that word. If that is you, there or if that is you here i want every person who can in faith to get a seed and sow it if the spirit of god is prompting you to do so then you do it if he is not then don't no pressure but right there on your computer screen right there on your smartphone there's a donate button there's a way for you to do it if god is speaking to you don't let the moment pass you by or you can text give cemm to 41444 you can call the number on the screen, 310-323-2600. My prayer ministers are ready to pray for you. And once again, I tell you, if you never sow anything into this ministry, we're going to pray for you. If you need prayer, call the number. But I urge you to mix your faith and your giving. Something supernatural happens when you do. The Bible teaches it. I've experienced it. And I encourage you to do so. If you're here, maybe God spoke to you something specific. And he has ministered to you to sow it. If that is so, I'm going to have Minister William, come here. I'm going to have you receive this. I'm going to have you pray and release the people. Because I'm hot and sweaty. 
Did you receive from God today? Did you? Would you clap your hands and thank God for his word? Whatever you're preparing to give, whatever you're preparing to give, go ahead and get that prepared. You're sowing into the word. You're sowing into the spirit. For the Bible says, he who sows to the spirit of the spirit reaps everlasting life. How many of you were impacted by this? How many of you are continuing to be impacted? How many of you know someone or people that need to hear this? Then let's sow for them today. Let's sow for the ones that aren't here. Let's sow for those that aren't hearing that God by his spirit is going to arrest them. Whatever you're going to give. You can sow right there at bishopmcclendon.com. You can text CEMM to 41444 if you want to uh, give on your bank card or your credit card right here in the tabernacle. These ladies here in the aisles can assist you swiftly. But whatever you're going to sow, whatever you're going to do today, let's do that in worship before we go today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once you're prepared, go ahead and lift that up. We're going to lift it up before the Lord before we release it and go on our way home to our next destination. Go, go ahead and lift that up as we prepare to give. Father, we thank you for your word that is continuing to be poured out by this prophet and by this apostle. Father, we thank you that it is bearing much fruit, that everyone who hears it, like we, we were taught today, that the power of God, is in the word of God and we're sowing into that word so we thank you for fruitfulness multiplication increase on every sower and giver and we agree that we receive it in Jesus name and everybody said amen people give with joy as unto the Lord and once you've given go ahead and stand up because we're on our way home hallelujah of Jesus we thank you <laughs> for the people here for the word today we thank you that the angels of the Lord are camped round about us bring us back here to the place of grace save next week where we will worship you in the beauty of holiness and everyone who agreed said Amen. God bless you enjoy your Sunday and we are God bless you